Like, I'm just telling you what happened to me. The 78-year-old woman, cool. But God got me at 24 years old. 24 years he wooed me. 24 years I was walking away from him. And finally he hit me with it. And finally something blossomed in me. And a root sprung down. And a new creation sprung up. And I said, I got to have more. And Jesus says, you sure? Because I'm about to show you how it's going to happen. And I want to share it with you. Because some of y'all think that God has just abandoned you when you come to him. But I'm telling you, you right in the midst of the greatest um, blessing that he has to give you. What is it? He's fertilized. I mean, isn't what, what we just read? He says, give me one more year. I'll dig around and fertilize it. And you thinking you come into the kingdom and don't trust no preacher that tells you otherwise. Like, you're, it's supposed to be unicorns and cotton candy or something. They're like this fluffy Christianity that's like, supposed to be easy when you come to Christ. And he ain't saying nothing like that. He says, I'm going to fertilize you. You know what fertilizer is? It's crap, baby. Like, it's nutrient, but it sucks. It is some heavy stuff. It's the stuff that he buries on top of you and you thinking God left you. And he says, no, I'm in the midst of this. I need to do it like this. I need to throw this stuff that stinks on top of your life. Why? Because that is the only way, that is the only thing that will bring out in you what I need to bring out in you. That's why he sends fertilizer. It ain't the easy stuff, it's the hard stuff. It's the crap of life that we don't want nothing to do with, that stinks all the time, but we gotta endure. We gotta learn to embrace that we might grow up and rise up in it. Because he needs to feed us. And there's some things fed in fertilizer you can't get no other way. Like that's where we get them nutrients. Like that's where we become those, those, um, what is it? As grown up as I thought I was at 24 years old, I was a boy and God is called a man. So he had to build a man out of a boy. And how you do that, you're gonna put him under some stuff. You're gonna throw some stuff on where you can't see the light no more, where you gotta endure, where you just gotta trust, where you just gotta embrace, where you just gotta um, believe. And after doing all, believe. Why? Because all you can do is stand when that stuff comes your way. When you can't take no more, you are about to burst through. And that fertilizer is gonna create in you a, a wherewithal, a long suffering, a dependence upon him that nothing else could. That's why he sends it on you. It ain't because he hates you. It's the opposite. It's because he loves you. Isn't that what scripture says? Every son of man I discipline. I throw some crap on. Why? Because I need to build them. I'd hate them otherwise because they'd be nothing. They burn up and I need them to grow up. So I got to send the stuff on them. I got to put them under that they might rise up to the new creation, to the standard I've set for them, that they might rise up and take the rightful place in my house, in my vineyard. And that's what Jesus goes to work doing. Oh, baby, if you understood how much you are loved by him, not only is he intercessing, but he is feeding you in such a way, embrace him, praise him during the time because you are being molded, you are being built, you are being fed and groomed into something. You won't even know what's about to sprout forth in your life. Like, I'm just being for real. This inner man that he is strengthening, ah, baby, you're going to be able to withstand some stuff when he gets done with you. Why? Because you have withstood some stuff. And there ain't no other way about it. So during this time where you can't figure it out, where you think God has left you, God is in the midst of it. Jesus is tending. He is digging around. He is fertilizing. He's all up in it. And I need you to see him for what he's doing. He is being a faithful and true king to you. He is being a, a friend that sticks closer than a brother because even in the midst of it, he's there with you. 